It's on to green. Crank it to 11, Scott. It's green. <laughs> One of those things that you shut down, you must have shut me down. Maybe the Lord's trying to tell me to sit down. No. Hallelujah. What a time we're living in. Amen. This is historic. Any way you look at it. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, we know what happens, but no matter what happens, this is historic time that we live in. And why in the world did God have you here for such a time as this? Because he knows we won't bow, we won't bend, we won't burn. Amen. They wouldn't bow, they wouldn't bend, they wouldn't burn. <laughs> like that. Well, that's what the Bible says. Or maybe that's a song. They wouldn't bow, they wouldn't bend, they wouldn't burn. <laughs> if it's not, it will be. And they said no matter. No matter what happens, we will serve the Lord. The Lord, our Lord can deliver us, and if he doesn't, we're still on the Lord's side. That's what they said. That's right. Hallelujah. That's what we say. That's right. Amen. Not going anywhere. There's been a lot of people that have been through a whole lot of things in their lives over the centuries and over the time. It's like when you read about some of the stuff that went on. I just read a book about, about uh, Unbroken, the book Unbroken, about a, a, a uh, Luis Zimmerman or something like that, Z Z Zimp Zimpanella or something. About He got shot down over the water and, and was on a uh, raft for days and days and days, and then he got captured. They thought they were just finally saved, and then they got recaptured, and then it really got bad. I, all the things they did to those men, a lot of them died in the camps and stuff and what they went through. And uh, a lot of them died and a lot of them came back, but there was amazing. Uh, it's just I can't imagine what what they've been through but God is on the move and he is restoring and bringing things back to yeah. the way it was supposed to be because his people are rising up That's right. and we're not going to put up with it. That's One right. of the things that I saw there that they're not going to show you on MSM, the mainstream yeah. prophets, of, prophets of Baal is, is uh one guy had a radio, I don't know if you guys seen him or not, but he had a radio up here and he was pl playing Christian music and the whole time I was there in the front part, he was, he was dancing with the music and jumping up and singing with the music. I mean, he just on and on. And it's like, had to be God. I think I would have been wore out long before, but the whole time I was up there, he was dancing with the, uh, and, and people were praying and all that stuff. You don't, Hallelujah. You don't see that unless they want to try to, put a Christian into uh, the people that went into the Capitol to try to make us all look bad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Everybody have a good week anyway? You know, our, our uh, peace and our joy and all that is not supposed to uh, have anything to do with what's going on in Washington. It might make us pray more. But we're supposed to keep our peace. And, and during this time frame, it can be a little hard to keep your peace, to not get uh, unsettled. I mean, I've been there. I know. And uh, it's like yesterday when I got in there and I got to have a message, Lord. You know, but it's like it, my brain's going every which direction, remembering all the things I see, saw and did and, and all that. And it's, it's like it's really hard. But I do think I pressed through and I believe the Lord gave me what I'm supposed to talk about today. But uh, do you guys have anything you guys want to share about what you went through? Yeah. You, where's, you got the mic back there? Hallelujah. I don't have a whole lot to say, but um, I think what was most impactful, kind of what you were saying, um, I mean, we came home and I was just out of it for the last day in this fog of, yeah. I don't know what's going on. And even walking away from DC from the big gathering, um, thinking 
something extremely significant happened here, and I have no clue what it was, but <laughs> something just happened. And, and, and then the events of this last day, especially yesterday, as I'm watching, I mean, social media and just being wiped clean of any conservative voice and just the great purging that's happening. I mean, trying to make sense of all that. And in the midst of it, um, there was this article that The Atlantic wrote, which I do not respect whatsoever, but they titled it, and I put it in the war room, A, a Christian Insurgents. And it was just completely bashing of any Christian things and, and what they wrote. And, and yet, as I just walked in here to worship, um, I really felt the Father say that that was a Christian insurgence. And not in the way that they're posing it to mock and ridicule Christians, but it was for once Christians coming to the Capitol and saying, we are standing and we are taking over this nation. And not in the violent way that the media is portraying, and yet it is in a violent way <laughs> because we are doing it with warfare. Um, and I mean, that's what we saw there. I mean, we're standing amongst the Capitol literally is just plastered with people everywhere and flags everywhere. And someone walks up and bows down and starts praying beside us. Within a moment, there's 25 people in a circle just praying on their knees before God. And I mean, there's people testifying, whole sound systems just testifying and praying in tongues. And I mean, it was everywhere. There was the church that was rising up. And so I take that as, yes, this is something extremely significant. And believers are, I mean, I believe we are stepping into revival. It's already happening. And so the church has been quiet. The long. church has been way too quiet. And so this yeah. is the era that we are stepping up and taking back over this nation. And so if you want to call that an insurgence, then hey, maybe that is a real call it whatever you like. <laughs> insurgence. Well, <laughs> but it is coming. So I guess I want to pray that even as we're standing here, I feel like we should pray that because I've been burdened with this for months of just we can pray and pray and pray for all this change, but unless we step up and Amen. put action to it, even beyond our prayers, um, I mean, we need men and women of integrity to, to step up and start leading. We can't just pray for all this corruption to go away because the reality is there's no one there to lead that has integrity. So I'll pray for that now. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you have done in this last week. As hopeless yes, as it has seemed to the natural eye, we know that you are doing wonders that you are working mighty acts in our midst, Father. We thank you for that time in D.C. when so many of your children came together united, saying, we will not stand for this corruption. We will not stand for this nation to be taken away yes, Lord. on our watch. And so we come, Father, we come crying out for those righteous individuals, those men and women of integrity to step up and say, I will be... I will take action. I will lead the charge. I will lead the way in this hour to be ones who stand upon truth and who return this nation back to you, empowered by the Spirit, Father. So I pray all across this nation that you would be speaking, that you would be burdening those individuals who will do that, who you will use, who will not be compromised, who will not sway to the temptations of money or of lies or deception or sex or whatever it is that is being used to bring down this nation, Father. And so we come asking for righteous individuals to be raised up, for those mighty ones, for those Esthers, for those Mordecais to arise and to be used by you to set your people free, Father. We bless you and we thank you. Amen. Amen. I think you said a pretty good word. Yeah, yeah I, the Lord had me shave my beard. Uh, yeah, he said, shave thy beard. You need a razor? Yeah. Uh, I agree with Aaron um, and Pastor David. Unfortunately, we weren't, the cell service was terrible there. We couldn't connect. We were trying to um, get together, but we ended up, I think, where, where you were originally. We had our, our streets crossed, but it was absolutely a Christian meeting. There was prayer everywhere, everywhere. Uh, there was the gospel being preached publicly everywhere. And there were a lot Jesus of people saves. there. Jesus saves. Yes, Jesus Over saves. Place. Flags everywhere. And it, it was absolutely a Christian meeting. And it was, it was co-opted by uh, the devil. And, and um, hey, that's okay. We went to the Supreme Court at 7 a.m. Um, that morning. And our, uh, I guess I'll give a testimony of a divine appointment that the Lord rearranged our schedule. And we were... Um, kind of trying to figure out the night before, and we were trying to figure out, okay, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to figure this out? We didn't want to get caught in all the crowds. We had a specific purpose there with Nehemiah to pray on the steps of the Supreme Court. And when we got there, we um, went through 
what we were doing, and there was a lady there, um, Bibiana was her name, she's from Louisville, and she was over there on her knees. And so I walked over and said, hey, can we pray with you? And uh, come the long story short, she, the Lord has been calling her to go there periodically, year after year after year, to pray on the steps of the Supreme Court and connect the Supreme Court with the um, Capitol building so that there would be righteousness ensuing from the Supreme Court and connect the two that they could um, and that they could get that out there. And we, we prayed and declared, and, and I believe that we broke power. In fact, I think it's, it's very likely that the response that happened later in the day was a response to what we did early in the morning. And I, I don't take that or say that lightly or in pride. We prayed specific things that the power of unrighteousness and that justice and truth would be reinstated in the courts and would, would come into uh, the legislature and emanate throughout the land. And we prayed specifically about abortion, that that power would be broken and declared over that. And um, I'm believing that the Lord answered our prayers Amen. because he sent us there and, and arranged for a specific thing for us to meet with that woman. And that's exactly what she was there for. Uh, and hey, I, I just want to say that I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying on the front lines and I'm praying for this country and I still believe that President Trump's going to be in there. I still believe that. And I'm not backing down from that. And if we end up being wrong, then we'll repent of that. But I'm there until the very end and I'm going down swinging. And I know you all are too. But I wanted to put that out there publicly that we're not backing off from that. And the very end is four years from now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, the very yeah, the very end will be the very end will be when God says it's time for the church to arise and, and stand in her place and authority in this this nation. And that's what we see happening right now. And that's not that's the reason why we're praying for President Trump to be in there, not to follow some leader or some mayor man. And we saw the body of Christ on the steps of the place that our laws are passed asserting authority. I have lots of video pictures of people praying. I'm going to put it all together and, and put it into a, a, a video for you guys and, and hopefully we can load it on the YouTube page. It's going to take me some time. But I want you to see what we saw and I know you saw the same thing. This was some of it. Yeah, some. This was, this, was a, this was a prayer meeting that happened. This was a prayer meeting and it was everywhere. And it was mixed because it always is. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, this was a prayer meeting that, that took place. And so, um, I guess that's all I have to say, Pastor David. Okay. We ain't going nowhere. Okay. Hey, yeah, Lazarus, I've back. said this a couple yeah. times. Oh. Lazarus was in the dead or in the grave four days. Don Trump isn't even cold yet. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I had something this morning that I don't know. Go, bring it. Okay, Come up. Before we Come came. Up. Come up. It just made me wonder, all through the scriptures, it says that they had to wait for the fullness of the iniquity of the Amorites or whatever group before the father could act. And my thought is, is it going to have to be Biden going into inauguration for the fullness of their crime to be accomplished so that they can bring the justice? I don't know if that's the truth of it, but again, it will look like it's the darkest moment to everyone and so many are discouraged, but it's only going to show forth his glory if it looks like we have no hope, right? right? Yeah. Now so, you're, now you're I mean, I don't know, but that's just something that hit me this morning. And there's another thing I want to ask just for prayer. On the way here this morning, I had jury duty yesterday, and I'm on the grand jury in courthouse for the next two months, every two weeks. Um, I really focused and prayed before I went yesterday morning, and part of what I was praying as I was sitting there waiting for things to happen was looking at this goddess picture behind the judge's seat. and forgiveness over that courthouse and the blind goddess that's on top of it and that his justice would be restored. But today it hit me, I'm going back the 18th. Um, if they do have it that day and if the father wants me to do this, I'm assuming they will. I feel like there might be a de declaration or something that I'm supposed to do from Washington courthouse in the courthouse um, two days before this inauguration is supposed to happen. So I'm just asking if you would pray that the father, if he is doing this, if this is of him, that he would show me what to do. And this is so totally out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Never done anything like so, but I'm just asking for your prayer. So. Does the Bible promise that we will always be comfortable? No, no, and I know okay. that. And but that's right why in, I'm asking. Then you're right in there. Right. Well, that's what hit me this morning. I'm going to be sitting in the courthouse in Washington courthouse. Right. 
So, Father, we thank you for the Spirit of God that dwells in yeah. on, Lord God. And we just, we just thank you, Father, that you are leading her, that you are directing her, that you're placing within her spirit. She might not hear you speak from aloud and, and all that, but that what you've placed in her spirit will come to fruition and that you will show her the things to say, the things to do. Lord God, the, the, uh, the specific things to walk through in acting out whatever she is to do there. So we just thank you, Lord God, and we thank you, Father, that the prayer of a fervent, righteous person availeth much, and it will avail much what you have. Because if you ask someone to do something, you, 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 the power comes with that word to do and walk it out. And it will do, God's word will do what it is sent out to do. It will accomplish it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. One of the <clears throat> interesting things, uh, I, uh, I was standing kind of by myself and I seen these two guys come up from the front and I was right in front of the Capitol building. And uh, they come through there, <clears throat> they come up there and, and as they came past the people that were in front of me, which was probably from uh, maybe Heidi, that far back and it's like I caught his eye and I just glared at him. I mean, I just, uh, our eyes just locked. And, sh and he come walking up there and stopped beside me and he says, you gotta rush up there and get in the Capitol building. We're taking the Capitol building. You know, you can, we gotta go, we, this is what we're here for. And I said, no, this is not what I'm here for. I said, what are you gonna do when you take it? I said, that's just stupid. And he just kind of looked at me and he took off. And then later I saw, have you ever seen the video where the people are walking into the, they've got a video that they took the, 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 the uh, what do you call it, the, the barricade, the police came out, took the barricade in and motioned the people into the courthouse. They, and, and so everybody's walking through there and they're, it shows them going, somebody's got a camera inside and they're going uh, up the steps and uh, uh, the police are standing right on the side and talking to people as they go by. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like bringing people into the slaughter. I mean, this was all planned. This, this was, this is not a spontaneous, this was all set up. And, and, and I saw they had them stop before and they took the barricades down. This is when it all happened. But the, I saw on that video with that camera going in, I saw the guy that came out here coming down the steps. If you look, at, there's a guy in a brown coat. If you ever look, see that video where they're going into the courthouse, uh, the guy that talked to me was coming down the stairs and I put it on Twitter. Underneath that, I, I said that person that, that in the brown coat that came down the steps was Antif and he was trying to incite people to go in there, which is they are trained to do that. In fact, I had just listened to Glenn back and he said, if you go, he said, do not interact with Antif. He said, they are trained. He said, they're trained so well in how to agitate you to make you want to run in and, and do stuff. And you do stuff that you wouldn't normally do because they, they know how to get you. They said, they can even do police that way. Or they, I mean, they could get the, the police that are trained can rile you up. So, so the ones that were in there that weren't Antif and stuff got caught up in the moment. You know, the, the plans were not to go there. And actually, the... the the crowd, the big crowd, not nearly everybody went over to the, to the Capitol building. I mean, there, there wasn't that many people. There was a bunch of people that went over, but not nearly everybody because there was, I read one place where uh, the, what's her name? Um, the gal that I quote every once in a while that, that writes, uh, she was there. She said, I was not there to protest, I was there to intercede. Well, I was there to, I was there to, uh, I was there to stand with my president is why I was, why I was there. I, would, I didn't need to think of it as necessarily a protest. Uh, yeah, it's to stop the steal and just show that there's a lot of people. <clears throat> That's why I went, was to show that there's a lot of people that are on their side. And she, <clears throat> she wrote, I think, now there's a huge difference in the number there, but she either said that 2.3 million or 3.3 million. I think she said 3.3 million. I don't think there was that many there, but that was what she had on there, that, that there was that many people there. But it, there was a lot of people. I mean, it, you're, 
you're talking about a spreader. There was you're standing there shoulder to shoulder and right in the front and right in the back. I mean, and that if you saw the crowd, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of open spaces. I mean, when you had to go somewhere, you had to weave your way through, through, and you had to step back and and whatever. Uh, uh, anyway, I got to say hi to a couple of Amish guys that were there, and yell at them. They're, they were they were actually with the two uh, black gals, the uh, diamond and silk. They were with them. They went through, and somebody said, "Who's the, there's diamond and silk?" And I look over, and here's a couple of Amish guys walking behind them. And I just yelled out, "Vivi Stu," which means "How are you?" And, and the guys like, "Oh, good, Vivi Stu," you know. And it's like we're waving, yelling back and forth. And people probably thought we were nuts, but anyway, <laughs> when I see an, an Amish guy in a crowd like that. Uh, you, you know, I have to, I have to yell. I can't just stay quiet. You know, it's like I want to <laughs> let them know that I can speak their language anyway. Yes. I wanted to share uh, something that happened. Does mom have the mic? Yeah. So this this was on Wednesday when you guys were in D.C. Um, I had just gotten off of FaceTime with Aaron and Nehemiah and. Um, a fr I called a friend. We just really were impressed to intercede. And we started in this very, I call it rapid fire intercession. Um, very turbulent, like pulling out the big Berthas and just going, okay? No sooner, I mean, maybe 45 seconds to a minute that we're in this rapid fire intercession, Azalea knocks off a glass jar of calcium onto the floor. And I'm so realize that it happened, um, but I'm kind of in this, you know, whirlwind, and I look over, and I see that an angel has been released and has manifested, and I'm going to show you guys, I can't, I, I don't know how to get it up there, um, but I'm standing there in this intercession and looking at this angel, and I can, you can see her elbow, here, I didn't show it to Pastor David, um, oh, wow. her arm, wow her elbow and this picture that is pouring out. So this is right at the time that they were entering. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Yes, a worship warring angel, whatever her purpose is. Um, the Lord in the midst of, I mean, this was probably right at the time that they're going into the Capitol. He got my stick in. Yeah. I did. So what what a um that's awesome manifestation yes what a manifestation that he is moving he is releasing he opened up and poured out broke it open and poured out like destroyed and poured out so i was just in in awe so i wanted to share with you guys because i know not everybody's on the war room what is the gal that i was trying to think of Kathleen. Kathleen Mitchell's the one that had that on there. And she said she was there and she said she was standing next. There was a person right close to her that was, had a helmet on, had, was dressed in black, had a walkie talkie, kept talking in, in it, and had the symbol of, uh, I think she said BLM, had the symbol of that on on him and said that he was talking to his walkie talking and was making the plans of what they were going to do afterwards about what time they should meet there and da 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 because i think a lot of the ones they were scattered through the crowd but i think mostly they were there waiting for the other people to come and then they they uh tried to take it over and a little bit yeah. a little more and more and more and more quick you don't have the tv on something like that oh that's right oh that's on zoom okay <laughs> i was thinking it's gonna be up here I think we could have done it with a file. It would have taken a little while to yeah. send it to me. You know, that actually looks better on there. Should focus automatically. Well, I, I, uh, the message for today, I, I titled it, Stand Tall. It's a savings. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know. Um, 
Um, so we are going to be making nursing home gifts for the nursing homes. And I made some flyers. Um, so if you guys want to donate, um, you can. Um, like art supplies. Okay. Where are they supposed to put the art supplies? Well, we're going to bring a donation bin next week, so you can put them in the donation bin. And that will be in the front of the church up here. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Are we allowed to put money in it? <laughs> are you the artist? <laughs> I, I think Tom... And whoever's into uh, deliverance, I think he's picked up a greedy spirit. <laughs> the spirit of greed there at, in Washington. And, the, <laughs> and that's a lot of the problem with Washington. The spirit of greed and money is uh, the biggest problem there. So I had a... Uh, So Mrs. Clark walks up to me today and she says, you know, we just have to stand. So I pulled my, I pulled my message out and showed her the head, my heading on it and it's stand tall. I said, yay God. How about that? But I, I felt like in the beginning... I just want to read Psalms 23. That was an exclamation point, I guess. It says a Psalm of David. I'm not the one that wrote this, but uh, the person that I'm named after did. And we have to keep this in mind. This is where we live at. This is where we're supposed to stay at. The Lord is my shepherd. We could even say it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake, not your name's sake, but his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's also your future. Where we will dwell. Isn't that awesome? Now, it says, For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, sometimes we don't really like the rod and the staff. But it's comforting to know that someone is correcting you and keeping you on the path that you're supposed to be on. So there's a comfort in the instructions. Just like when we instruct our children to be, do certain things and whatever, it's comforting to them to know that there's guidelines here, that somebody is watching over them, taking care of them. But right now, more than ever, we need to know that he is our shepherd. It is not eyes on Trump. It's not eyes on the United States. It's eyes on him. But what is he doing in the United States? And who is he using in the United States? And we stand up beside whoever he's using. I know we've been accused, the Christians are accused of holding Trump as, up as our savior. Which that's obviously the other side speaking. Like we're Trumpists or something. Well, if God is using Trump in order to do a certain specific work, then I want to be a Trumpist. If, if uh, I was living back in the time that David was ruling as king, I would want to follow after what David is, was doing because he was the one that God put in charge of, of that and what he's trying to do. Uh, but it's, it's easy to rest in the scripture when everything is going so wonderful. 
which is yeah. where which is where we all want to be. We all want to stay in our comfort zone. I want to be in my comfort zone. <laughs> we don't like to get out in no man's land. You know, even sometimes when I feel I'm supposed to say something, speak speak the word out. It's like I don't really want to do that, but I want to be obedient. And so when when uh, you guys feel this bubbling up inside, and you believe that and sometimes he will give you something that's for yourself and where you are, and you're not necessarily supposed to get up and share that, but when you feel like it's something you're supposed to get up and share, because we're family here, you know, I mean, I, I might be the pastor, but I'm just the first amongst equals. We're all equal. I just stand in my... Uh, my place and everybody else is in and doing what the Lord has them to do, right? Hallelujah. But when it gets a little a little rough, it's a little harder to live in Psalms 23. Uh, but how many people know that it's darkest right before the dawn? Everything looks pretty dark right now. But I keep listening to the prophets on a flashpoint if you've never listened to them, it's... it's uh, it's very, very interesting. Last night, uh, it's on the Kenneth Copeland net network, but he's normally not in. Last night was the first time I heard him speak a little bit. He called in and, and gave a word. But uh, last night they had on uh, a pastor, is it Gene Bailey? Gene Bailey's a pastor that leads it, directs it. And uh, last night he had on Lance Wallano, Hank Kuhneman, Kat Kerr, Mario Cirillo. Kat Kerr was the first time she was ever on there. Mario Cirilla and uh, Dutch Sheets, and uh, none of them are backing away, but only seem to be stronger than ever in believing that Trump would be reinstalled as president, even if it has to come to reinstalling. And others have not backed away. I've not heard of anybody that has backed away from from the prophetic that they're saying it's not. I heard one guy say, well, maybe it meant, and he wasn't one that actually prophesied it, but he said one of his uh, sons in the, in the Lord uh, said, well, maybe it's the next four years after this four years. And uh, he's the only person that I've heard say that, but it's, I believe it's this, this time frame. Uh, faith is calling things that are not as though they were. So we are standing by faith, in faith, and we're, we're uh, how do I say this, we're, we're standing by faith on the rhema word, not so much the logos, even though you can go back to the logos and say it's, it's logos, but we're standing on the rhema word, what we believe God spoke through to somebody. Just like we were, we had a. We had our group over uh, that worked for us last night, and it's like it's like we were talking about talking about that. That it's it's when God speaks directly to me, I don't have any problem having faith for it. And you've all experienced, you know what I'm talking about. When when you believe God said something to you, you can stand on it, and that's it. Or if the Word of God says something, you can stand on that. But when but when you, it's almost like the prophets. Because a lot of these prophets I really didn't know before a whole lot. I mean, I haven't followed the pro what are they saying and stuff. Basically, Mark Taylor's about the only one that I've been kind of listening to all, you know, for the last uh, six years, five years. And uh, I'm going to get into some of his prophetic words just to show how correct he was even before tr Trump was in office as to the things that have happened. But it's, it's like I, in this way, it almost feels like I'm putting faith in the prophets that I don't really know that well. But my spirit says, yes, they're right. You know, I mean, it's like it's what I want to believe and it's what I believe and things like that. But it's, it's, not, it's not like I personally know these people other than Dutch Sheets has put his hand on my shoulder. Oh, my God. That's why, that's why this anointing is so strong. <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously. 
Yeah. So faith is way the way I could explain faith versus hope is there's bicycles that are sitting out there. I have faith that I can go out there and get on a bicycle and ride down the road. I could even do it when the tires were flat. I have faith, and faith is a knowing. I know I can ride that bicycle. Right? I mean, you all know. You, you don't have to have hope or faith, you know. You, you can ride the bicycle. Now, the boys back here that ride unicycles, they could bring a unicycle in there and say, you know, well, have me to get up. Well, I don't have faith I can ride that unicycle, but I have hope that I might be able to ride that motorcycle <laughs> or, or the unicycle. So I can, I can hope that I can ride it, which is totally different than faith. Because like I said, I can ride the bicycle down the road. Probably even if both tires are flat, I could still ride the thing down, down the road because I have faith because I have a knowing. Faith, when you step in, the real faith, I believe, is the knowing that this is what's the way it's supposed to be. Does that make sense? Faith is a substance of things not hoped for, but the things not seen, or whatever. So I think, I think faith arises from hope. You know, it's like, and then you, you kind of have a feeling of something, and then you read it in the Word, and then you say, oh, okay, now I can... Have faith in that. <coughs> Hallelujah. So if I look, when I look around my natural eyes and look at what is being said right now, it is easy to let myself slip from faith to hope. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. But we can hope till the cows come home sometimes, but it's like we, we have to have faith in what and what's what God wants to do. In 2 Timothy 1.12, it says, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I still have and I still believe the rhema words of the prophets that have spoken. Yes. And right now we have a big mountain to move. But I think we are standing with our backs against the wall. And we are needing God to show up in a mighty way. We see this through scripture that as the people in the Old Testament, it's like when, the, uh, it seems like a lot of times when, when uh, God would speak, but it, wait, it was like God waited until the last minute to come in and save them. And it feels like this is where we're at. But one of the things that, I wasn't going to go there right away. Okay, we'll wait. But like the story in Hezekiah and Kings, uh, when King Sennacherib showed up with promising the people all this good stuff, but the people stood strong because Hezekiah said, don't say any word. The king said, don't talk to them. But the guy came up and he said, hearken not to Hezekiah. Yeah. The news media, don't hearken to Trump. For thus saith the king of Assyria, make an agreement with me by a present and come out to me and then eat ye every man of his own vine. Doesn't that sound familiar? We've got to go to socialism. We've got to go to, you know, where we all have the same things. I mean, it's like if you have 100,000, then I get 100,000. And, you know, I mean, this is utopia, <laughs> what they try to put out there, but it never happens. He said, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig trees, and drink ye every one the waters of his cistern. It, every car will, every garage will have two cars in the, in the garage, and, you know, you will prosper. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil, olive, and of honey, that ye may live and not die, and hearken not unto Hezekiah. When he persuadeth you, saying, the Lord will deliver us. Isn't that what, isn't that what the, the, these people are rioting about and all this kind of stuff? You know, it's not fair. Things aren't fair. Well, I don't think you can show me any socialist, communist, or any other uh, country that everything is fair. Life is not fair. That's right. That's right. There's... there's 
There's, there's some people that they have health up till they're 95 years old and then they lay down and die and there's others that have to struggle the whole time they go through life. I mean, it's, we're not promised that everything is going to be equal to everybody. But that's what people are think is going to happen. But there's no other country that it has happened to where everything is, is now so wonderful. So what did they do? They went to the prophet. Isaiah. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, The day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. We have come to the birth here. We're, we're birthing something new, bringing people into, the, into uh, you know, all the church people. Now, there was a lot of people there that were not church people also. But the, 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 by far the majority were, were Christian, good, rightly people. I also saw Robin, the Robin and Robin, the one that prophesied that Biden will not be president. And I like, the, I like when he said that. He said, I wasn't thinking about anything. This is the way the Lord speaks to me a lot of times when he speaks. And I asked the Lord to speak to me more. But he said he was, he was just kind of turned around and all of a sudden... In his spirit, the Lord said, Biden shall not be your president. And, and when he said that, it's like, I can relate to that. I've, I've, I've heard things like that before, you know, just out of the blue, just going. That was Robin. Robin, uh, Robin, decides to be Robin. So it's Robin 1 and Robin 2. You can decide which one would probably be Robin 1 and which one's Robin 2. <laughs> <laughs> the robber? Robin? So anyway, uh, but when I read that, it's like I'm thinking, yeah, we're birthing something here. We've brought it. We've, it's been brought. The Lord has brought it to where we understand the steel. We understand the fraud. We, un we can see all the stuff that they have done. It's out there. Everybody knows it. They know we know it. But so far, we haven't had anybody to stand up and, and, be, and, and say, thus far, no more. We, we have no... DOJ, we didn't have a DOJ, we don't have an FBI, we don't have, as far as we can see now. I don't know what all's going on, but it appears to the natural eye like there is no justice because there's nobody that will go after. I heard somebody explain it that in the, in the, uh, in the uh, political realm, you don't go after somebody like if somebody, uh, which it sounds like they want to do to Trump, if he's out, they want to take him to court and, and all this stuff. But normally when somebody is in office or something and, and they catch you doing something, when if you resign or get out, you will automatically, they will drop all charges because it's, you're in the political elite system and, and uh, we have a caste system here in the United States. Uh, where am I at here? It may be the Lord thy God, he says, will grant a birth, there is no strength to bring forth. Right now, it just seems like with what happened with the Capitol, it seemed like somebody pulled the plug and the energy was just drained out of stuff. When you work on Twitter and stuff, some of the ones that were, Trump is my president, will always be my president, and there's some of them are saying it's over, it's over, you know, whatever, which I never expected those to. Anyway, it may be the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah says, Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, he's going to leave. By the same shall he return, shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. So for my sake, Biden will not enter into the city of Washington. I kind of did a no no there, but right. anyway, <laughs> but we, de we decree that, that he will not uh, be in office. Now, our prophets are saying Biden will not be president. They have not changed their minds, and also there will be a lot of people going to jail. 
That is the prophetic word out there. Mark Taylor has been saying this for years already, and I have some of his prophets. prophets. He has been saying, I don't think there are any... Uh, okay. Let me read you some of his, his prophetic words that he's given. This was in... This was in 10 7, October 7th of 19 or 2015. This was before he was elected. This was still when everybody was saying that he didn't have much of a chance, right? So, America, I have chosen you as the launching platform for the worldwide assault on the spiritually oppressed people of the earth. People will say, How are we chosen? It is, it's as if America is frozen. I am not the God of the universe and all of creation. I have heard the cries of my people that have sought my face, and I will heal their nation. People will ask, how will I do this? I shall do this in two parts. For the f First, the Spirit of God says, army of God, out of the darkness, I command you to arise and take your place. For I have given you extra time, mercy, and grace. Go, go, go. Do not slow down. Begin to take and hold your ground, for there is no more time to waste. America will once again be the great light. The enemy will say, oh, the light, the light, it shines so bright. There's nothing else left to do but take flight. And indeed they will. The sign will be a mass exodus in the natural as the spiritual flee, the, the evil spiritual flee. Second, the Spirit of God says the gatekeeper, the gatekeeper, the President of the United States is a spiritual gatekeeper. I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, and anointed him as president for such a time as this. Can you not see this? For even in his name, Donald, meaning world leader, the spiritual connotation, faithful. Trump, meaning to get the better of or to outrank or defeat someone, is something often in a highly public way. This man I have chosen will be faithful, world leader, and together with my army will defeat all of America's enemies in the spiritual and in the natural. You will see it manifest before your eyes. I will use this man to shut gates, doors, and portals that the past president has opened. He will open gates, doors, and portals this past president has shut. My army shall not be silenced. They will begin to see he is the one I have chosen. They will begin to rally around him and keep him covered in spiritual support. And as you gain ground, they will say... America is not frozen. Hallelujah. And the same one, he says, the Spirit of God says the border, the border is a 2,000-mile gate that's, a flowing, that's flowing across with demonic hate. I will use my president to shut this gate and seal it shut. It must be shut. Then I will use him and my army to root out evil structures that are still there to the point that the government will begin to call on my army. They will prophetically locate these structures so they may be dismantled before any evil can. In the same prophetic word, well, the next one is about OPEC and that the gas will be a dollar a gallon, below a dollar a gallon. And that happened also that during his four years at one point, it was under a dollar a gallon. Not everywhere, but there were certain places that where there was. And he says, the Spirit of God, the Supreme Court shall lose three and my president shall pick new ones directly from my tree. How many did he replace? Okay. The Spirit of God says, no, oh, I'm not going to read that one. That's about El Chapo. That's a little, uh, I understand that one, and, I, and it did happen also. The Spirit of God says, this is in 6, this would be June 12th, 2016. The Spirit of God says there's a beast in the east that's trying to arise that thinks he's the best. But I have one in the West that will give him a godly surprise and take him down to the least. For this beast that has risen is no surprise, for my church is in a Babylon prison. Come out of her, or it will be your demise. He's got a, a lot of stuff here, but I just kind of went through and tried to get some of the ones that you can see that what he has prophesied is, has been happening or has happened. The spirit of... God says, this is in uh, also June 12, 2016. The Illuminati and ISIS have merged and are attacking the pulse of this nation, for they are responsible for the list of assassinations. For the new world order is shaking and quaking, for they will go down in flames ablazing. For they are trying to kill this nation before my chosen one takes office through depopulation, finances, and assassination. 
My army, my intercessors, arise and take the fight to the enemy. Stop the assassination. Stop the attacks to the pulse of this nation. And he goes on about how he's going to take down the Illuminati, which hasn't happened yet. That's why he's going to still be there. Right? Uh, That's probably why it's all still. I wasn't going to read this, but it looks interesting. <laughs> October 13... 2015, this is before the election, this is also October. The Spirit of God says to Clintons, the Clintons, your time has come to an end. For you are being omitted for the crimes you have committed. Hillary's is no great secret and they will be her downfall. Her secrets will be her downfall. But bills will be exposed one after the other and it will be a windfall. For this time you will not escape pro prosecution and restitution for the rape and prostitution. You thought no one saw, but the Lord... But I, the Lord, see it all, and now this will be your downfall. The Spirit of God says, beware, beware, the enemy roams about seeking whom he can devour, and this sitting president is doing just that in this hour. He's full of lies and deceit and is very hateful. He's talking about the president before. He spreads division and corruption with every mouthful. Beware when he says, look over here what the right hand is doing to divert your attention from what the left hand is doing. In his intention, this is a setup from this president and his minions from the hate, the division, and Hillary Clinton. Why can no one see this? For the signs are clear to see that this president and his minions shall try for three. A sign will be he will try and take the guns so the people can't rise up and stop him when he tries to run. He will succeed for this. He will not succeed for this is the people's right, but make no mistake. Anyway, then he goes into my army will rise up. Um, Spirit of God says, I am neutering this sitting president. This is in 2015. I am neutering this sitting president in this hour so his evil and corrupt ideologies and theologies can no longer reproduce in this country. I call my United States of America. For this man who holds the title called the president of the United States will begin to lose his grip from it and be stripped of it. For I, the Lord God, will rip it from him. This man who calls himself commander in chief is nothing more than a lying, deceitful thief. He kind of says it the way it is. That's the way God speaks, isn't it? The Spirit of God says, Time is up for those who are corrupt, for I shall begin to remove those who stand for evil in leadership and stand in the way of my agenda. He's still doing that. Judges, senators, congressmen, and women of all kinds, even in the local, state, and federal lines, even the Supreme Court is not immune from their corrupt and evil ways, for I will remove some and expose their backdoor deals with which have been at play. And I think that's happening now. For my America has been chosen as the launching platform for my harvest. And she will be a light unto the world once again. As I clean up that which is the darkest, fear not, America. Your greatest days are ahead of you. Arise, my army, and fight, and watch what I will do. You guys getting excited yet? Yeah, I wanted to read some of these because it, uh, this, this person, not that I agree with everything he's ever said or whatever and done, but... Uh, I believe he has the mind of God bringing. This is, now this is in uh, January, February, March, April 28th of 2011. So this was, what, five years before the election. The Spirit of God says, I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, for such a time as this. For as Benjamin Netanyahu is to Israel, so shall this man be to the United States of America. For I will use this man to bring honor, respect, and restoration to America. America will be respected once again as the most powerful and prosperous nation on earth, other than Israel, he says. The dollar will be the strongest it has been in the history of the United States and will once again be the currency by which others, by which all others will be judged. Uh, the Spirit of God says in this next election, they'll, they will spend, this was talking about 2016, and this also have. The Spirit of God says in this next election they will spend billions to keep this president in. It will be like flushing their money down the toilet. Let them waste their money for it comes from and it is being used by evil forces at work, but they will not succeed for this next election will be a clean sweep for the man I have chosen. They will say things about this man, the enemy will, but it will not affect him. 
And they shall say it rolls off him like a duck. Remember when they were saying that? Oh, they were bringing all these accusations and it's like nothing stuck. And even the, the Trump administration, when they brought this uh, thing out, you know, that uh, where he made some lewd comments about what he can do. Uh, I mean, even the Trump administration, the ones that were going at it at that point, thought this is probably, I mean, this will probably do him in. But it was like, so, so it says, uh, rolls off of him like a duck as for the feathers of, as, for as the feathers of a duck protect it, so shall my feathers protect this next president. Even mainstream news media will be captivated by this man and the abilities that I have gifted him with, and they will even begin to agree with him, says the, the Spirit of God. Now, he had a prophetic word, I believe, that it's like six, seven months into his term, they will finally start seeing him and going along with him. That did not happen. I'll, I'll t tell you that. This one is interesting. In October 2016, he says, the Spirit of God says Russia. That's right, Russia. I will use Russia, the United States of America, and her allies to take on the Fourth Reich called ISIS, where it has come full circle again. That's right, again. The New World Order is trying to rise and take its place just like they did in World War II using the Nazis. They will try again using ISIS for this plague is spreading but not for long for they will be wiped out for their wrongs for just as in world war ii america and their allies came in from the west and russia from the east so shall it be again to slay this so-called beast and it will be brought down to the least some will say why would i use russia am i not the god of the cosmos i will use anyone in any nation i choose whether some like it or not i will not be put in a box and that's exactly what happened russia came alongside of us and we wiped out isis not me. And I don't have the prophetic word, but he's got he's got prophetic words that it has been out from the begin, beginning also that said that there will be military tribunals. And he believes that a lot of people are going to be uh, tried for treason. And he said this before, I think before Trump was elected or shortly thereafter, that there will be military tribunals. And that is pretty much where we are now. I mean, we are, we are at the place that if, if uh, because the, 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 the judges of all, we don't want anything to do with it. The Supreme Court said that we don't want anything to do with it. And now Congress has said we don't want anything to do with it. So the only thing left now is a tribunal. And Sidney Powell is a, can, can try cases uh, in the tribunal court. Not everybody can, but she's one that's eligible to do that. So, in Dutch, you, I would say, was denkst? <laughs> what do you think? This is good. And, and I've heard more people say, no, I know Kat Kerr, and I think uh, Johnny Enlow, I think he mentioned also about courts, the military tribunals. Supposedly, they have, they have redone Guantanamo and all that kind of stuff. Uh, to, to get ready for all this stuff going on. Now, I'm hoping, see, there I go back into hope. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that this all comes to pass that's, that's been said because the thing, that, the thing that I see is everything that Trump has done has set everything up until this point. I mean, if you see all the, the directives he's given and all the stuff, he's set it all up for that when he gets into the next next. Uh, when he's put back in, he will, I mean, it's all set up to where he's ready to go. And it looks to me like he's going to have to do it within the next two weeks where the, the, where, where the, uh, the, the cake and ice cream is going to have to hit the fan. I'd rather use that than other terms, okay? So if you've watched the Flashpoint last night, uh, uh, Kat Kerr said that we should be eating cake. She had a piece of cake, held it up, and she said, we, I'm celebrating. She said, we need to celebrate. And that's what you see when, you, when, when the word of the Lord would come uh, with, with Jehoshaphat. The word of the Lord came. The enemy was still out there, but they started celebrating and worshiping God because the, the word had already come, so it was time to rejoice. 
They didn't have to stop and pray and carry on and all this stuff to bring it to pass. They said the word of the Lord is there and we believe it and by faith it's going to happen. Right? Yeah. But one of the statements that, that Mark Taylor said was it said the, the tribunal, the military tribunals that are going to happen are going to make Nuremberg look like they were small potatoes. Now the the say the thing is out there. I'm not saying there it is. <laughs> Sorry, better late than never. There it is. Wow. That's perfect timing. That's the angel. Uh, that that gives me geese bump. I was going to. I finally, you know, vacuumed it, but it, it was like I could not get near it. It was, it was a resonating presence. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm surprised yeah, the angel didn't reach almost. out and smack you if you tried to clean that up. I, I think I'd have been scared. I was saying after that happened, um, I, I don't know if I told Aaron or Christine that I was talking to, I wanted to put a fence around it and keep it because there was this presence that was emanating from it. It was so sacred and so holy to vacuum it up. Now, the two little ones, of course, trying to keep them away. So I'm strapping in them in their high chairs and they're starting to get real restless and screaming. So I finally had to vacuum it up, but I'm praying over them. I'm like backing away from it. Like, oh my word, yeah. I don't want this to go away. And why, but I knew it wasn't going away because it had been broken and poured out. And that was a physical representation of what the father was doing in the spiritual. He had broken the seals, opened the gates and poured it out. And it was it, the releasing of those warring, um, uh, feasting, um, worshiping angels, you know, that all goes hand in hand, the warring and the worshiping um, all together. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Speak of the fact that it was messy. Yeah, it was, you know, and it, that's it. It was, usually I would look at that as a big mess, but it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It was a beautiful and, mess. Yes, it was a beautiful mess in the glass. I picked up the big pieces of glass. The little ones are kind of still in there. You can see them in there. But I kept looking at her arm. I keep saying her. Do you see like her arm coming down in the crook of her elbow? And then like a pitcher pouring it out, pouring it out. So uh, can, David, can I pray? Hmm? Can I pray right now? I, no, we don't allow, no, you don't allow, allow to pray. In you a never church. want me to pray. <laughs> not allowed to pray in a church. Oh, Go ahead. is that okay? Father, we just come proclaiming your power and your sovereignty. Yeah. Most high, yeah. seated above all. Uh, Father, you are above the chaos. You are above the messes. You are above the web of lies, deception, mind control. You are above uh, the enemy. You see all that he is doing. Father, you have allowed it. You have him on a leash. Father, you have him on a leash. He answers to you and he can only do what you what you allow him to do. You know all, you are not above him. Uh, Father, you know all that, that the enemy, as we were talking yesterday, we were saying, whatever the enemy, the spirit of Haman is out there. We know the spirit of Haman is out there. It is active, it is alive because it has prepared the gallows, it has prepared a place for the people of God to go to and we know that if there's a Haman, as Eric said, if there's a Haman, there's a Mordecai and there's an Esther. So we ask for that arising of that Mordecai and of that Esther. And Father, for that place, those places for which Haman has prepared for your people, we know the end of the story that actually the enemy of your people ends up in that place, ends up annihilated in that place. So we, we in the name of Jesus Christ, we annihilate that spirit of Haman, that spirit of Jezebel that are working uh, together 
together to capture your people. Uh, Father, cause us to be rooted all the more firmly, all the more deeply, rising above, rising above it all, seated in the heavenlies and knowing uh, that you have this. So for those warring angels that have been released, we thank you, Father. We thank you that they are at work and they are doing that those mighty acts that you have ordained them to do. Now, may you guide us in doing those works that you have prepared in advance for us to do. Walk that path that you have prepared in advance for us to walk. Be those vessels that you have created us to be for such a time as this. Guide us and may we get out there in boldness and faith and courage. May we not hope, but may we walk by faith and not by sight and step out onto that water and trust. Let, let's step out of the boat. Let's step out of the boat. Let's step out of the boat and walk on water knowing that you are going to guide every step, even if we're shaking at first, even if we're a little bit timid at first, may we start running on that water because you are holding us and you are guiding our feet and you are holding that water as a, as a steel plank under our feet that we can run on. We praise you, our King, in Jesus' name. So, and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Syrians and hundred and four score and five thousand. When they arose early in the morning, that was the ones that were smote did not arise, but the ones that weren't smote rose. <laughs> when, <laughs> when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. Now, this morning during worship, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, you know, how God used to operate back then. He did that quite a few times when he went out and smote the people. And there's been a teaching, and actually it's been in the Hebraic uh, thing. I'm, I'm not on board with this. But she says that God, that with, with the rapture, that he will take the bad people out instead of the good people. And she goes along like, like, uh, like Noah and the ark, you know, I mean, he killed off the old pe the, the, those people and whatever. But I was thinking, wow, wouldn't it be amazing that all of a sudden we wake up in the morning and all these traitors are gone? Oh, wow. Doesn't that make more sense? Pardon? Yeah. Yeah, and that's her. You've you've heard her her uh, what she's put together then because that's what she talked about. That you take the tares, separate the tares, and then you burn the tares, and the rest of them are left. But I think that's that clear at the end. But but uh, I thought about that, and I was thinking, you know, how today would God do this? I mean, before he just went out and killed them all. Say, well, we're in the age of uh, grace. Well, they were in the age of grace back then too. I mean, they didn't just they didn't just uh, sin, and then they God came and whacked them. You know, if he would, they would have not sinned as much as they did. <laughs> They had they had grace, but it's like so so we're we're at that point where it's like, and 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 I think uh, when when you talked about being poured out, uh, the church is at the place where we're poured out. Yeah. I mean, it's like we've been praying, we've been praying, crying out to God to do this, and so it's like we've been poured out. Now we're just waiting. We've heard the prophets. We believe the prophets, because it says that if you believe the prophets people will, per will prosper and remember when jeremiah was telling the people you know you guys need to repent in jerusalem and they kept on dancing and doing all their stuff what happened to them because they didn't believe the prophet they got wiped out they got taken off to babylon and then jeremiah later with the group that he was still with they left him with the people and he said don't go to egypt you're not going to make it god wants you to stay here and said no we're going to egypt and they go down there and get wiped out and so so most generally, I've always looked at Old Testament prophets as prophets that have been doom and gloom. I mean, it's kind of, you know, you read Jeremiah, you read Isaiah, and if you don't do this, you're going to get wiped out, you know, and it's just like, you know, he's sending, uh, you know, destruction on these people because they've not followed after him. But it's like, then I was thinking, you know, when I was putting this together, it's like, no, they weren't all doom and gloom. I mean, they're like this, they went to Isaiah, and Isaiah said, you know, God's going to come and rescue you. You know, so I mean that that's good news. So it's like it, there are a lot of places where the prophets spoke, and God blessed them because they followed the prophet. Yeah. 
you know, because I, that's one of the things that I've thought about was it always seemed like the doom and gloom prophets. It happened what they said. And so I'm wondering, am I supposed to be listening to the doom and gloom prophets? There's plenty of those out there. Or do I, do I listen to the ones that, that uh, say God's going to rise and he's going to deliver us and, and he's going to going to do all these wonderful and mighty things, which I think it's exciting to see what God, what God is going to do. But so, uh, Q, and I don't know what you think of Q. I don't know what I think of Q. Uh, but I don't follow Q, but, I, but the people, uh, one person that I listen to, he, he gets into it a little bit every once in a while. But they've been saying for months and months that we're going to hit a quiet time, that the social media is going to go dark. And they have now, Twitter has now uh, wiped out, uh, well, not wiped out, but they've taken off of Twitter. I think they've got taken Trump off, although I've seen, yeah, yeah. Some, I've seen some of his tweets. But it's like right when they come on, they're there, and then they're gone. Uh, but, uh, but they've taken General Flynn off. They've taken the X-22 off. Uh, they've taken a whole bunch of people. They've done a purge. And they've done that, and now I hear, I heard say that they're coming after Parler next, that they're going to try to, I mean, I thought Parler was safe to where they can't do anything with Parler, but it's because of the, because Parler is set up on, is it a Google account or Microsoft, or at, is it on an Apple platform so Apple can wipe them anytime? And so, uh, so there might be a time coming here that we're not going to know much of anything other than what the, what the MSM news media says, you know, the, uh, but I still recommend that you watch uh, Steve Bannon in uh, War Room Pandemic. Uh, he, he seems to be, pardon? I started to watch him last night, and I was actually about 30 seconds. Hmm. Off of what? But what were you watching it on? What platform? YouTube. Okay, because he's on the, if, 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 if you want, if you uh, download the app on your iPhone for uh, Real America's Voice, he's on from 10 to 12 on TV, uh, and or you might have that that channel. So he's on from 10 to 12, and now during all this time, he's also on at night from 5 to 6. But it, this is a Steve Bannon that was with President Trump in the beginning, right. so he knows he knows more about what what's going on with with all that. But yeah, he, they they're constantly have been saying that they might be losing all their places. But if you go then to uh, War Room Pandemic, I think dot com, you can pick up uh, what's going on because all of a sudden the, all these other platforms might be gone. Yeah. You know, to where to where. Uh, and, and just think, just think, you might you might have to actually get your uh, get your things from God. Come on. <laughs> You might have to let the Holy Spirit just tell you what's going on today. That's one of the things I like about Hank Kuhneman says that he, he listens very little to any t television stuff because he doesn't want to get, and even that's why I said what I said this morning about what I felt like I was supposed to say was, is this coming from the Spirit of the Lord or is it because I've heard it, heard it enough to where I'm prophesying out of what I've heard instead of what I'm hearing from the throne room. So anyway, we need to keep praying, never give up. Don't turn on each other or the prophets. We see the, where the prophets in the Bible spoke, and some of them happened right away. Some of them were a little later. Uh, so we stand strong in the power of his might. In the power of his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got something to lose? You got the You were talking about Jeremiah, and uh, during during all that chaos, Jeremiah had enough faith to, to purchase a piece of land and get the deed, because he knew that God, the land would be restored. Yes. And that's that's when you were talking about faith. That's that's why the prophet does. You know, it's like the Lord told him to do something; he did it. Right. That was a prophetic motion. I mean, God told him to do that. And he went and, and did that. So when God tells you to do that, you need to step into what God says. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Do you want to come up? <laughs> yeah. You don't have to, but. Stand tall. <laughs> Where's the church? And what's the Lord doing in the church? <clears throat> the judgment of God, it says in Scripture, starts in the church. Well, what is the Lord doing? The Lord is sifting so that the only thing left is his word and not the word of the enemy that's been planted in the church. <clears throat> Everybody here, let me just talk about myself. There are, th I would tell you a year ago that I was pure as the driven snow. And then you would have said, you're deluded, Tom. You're out of your mind. <clears throat> Except I did not understand clearly what word was sown from the Lord and what word was sown from the enemy. It, there's a deception because the wheat and the tares can look alike on the surface. But in times of trouble, then the true word of the Lord comes forth. There's a choice that's being made. I said from, from the beginning, this is not a war of politics. This is a war of the word. <laughs> there are certain things that we have sown, have had sown into us in subtlety just like the serpent in the garden, that we have accepted as being acceptable in our lives, that we do not realize have named us. We have participated in things other than the name of the Lord, and we have called it the name of the Lord. There right now is a separation of light from darkness on the internal, in the internal kingdom that everybody has on the inside of them. And he is now putting people in positions where the Lord is saying, this is what I've been saying, and you are now able to see it. You can see darkness there now, and you can see light here now. Choose this day whom you will serve. This is the prophets of Baal and Elijah on Mount Carmel. This is exactly where we are. <clears throat> I want to clarify this a little bit more. There will be doctrines that you thought and I thought were absolutely biblical doctrines that are now being made manifest that they were not biblical doctrines, they are doctrines of demons that we, have, that we have taken in. And the Lord in this time with his church is saying, do you want to follow that now that you know? Or do you want to follow that? Because this, my word will cost you. You cannot be friends with the world and me at the same time. <clears throat> choose this day whom you will serve the Lord would say to you I am sifting I have set my tabernacle upon the place of the separation of the wheat from the chaff and I am doing that first in my church to bring forth purity and honor and holiness and righteousness in my name, then 
I shall cause my church to rise up and to take over and, and eliminate from the land the leaven which has, which has brought destruction upon this land. And I will purify first my people, and then they will live in a place that is pure as they are. I have to say this because the Lord is saying this. <clears throat> in that story, in the narrative where Elijah went up on the mountain and called forth the priests of Baal, the people said, the people of Israel said, oh, we see now, we will serve the Lord. Historically, we need to understand the background of what happened in that. They, the people said that they would, yet in fact, the political system was still entrenched and absolutely rose up in rebellion against the true word of God on Mount Carmel and brought persecution. In that place of persecution, is the place that the Lord intends to bring the real separation. Because the word came from Israel that says, oh, we see that God is God. Yet in the place when Jezebel brought persecution again, Jehu, Jehu. That was the manifestation of the word that came forth on Carmel through Elijah. The event of the overthrow is different from the day that the word comes forth. There's a time lapse. And I'm telling you that the word of the Lord has been sent forth to the United States. We're in a place where we have said yes, and now Jezebel has reacted to this whole thing. Hold on to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. I've said my piece. That, that yeah. was very interesting. Uh, remember uh, Rabbi Khan? In his, he said that Trump was Jehu. And if you want to look at it that way, I guess Jezebel is the deep state. Because Jehu drove recklessly and just come flying in through there. I mean, they, when the, they saw him coming, it says, looks like Jehu. I mean, he's, he's whipping the horses and carrying on and is ransacking everything, which is what the deep state thinks about Trump, reckless and whatever. Hallelujah. I was sitting there, I was thinking I wanted to clarify something, but I forget what it was. But the Lord will bring it back. Is that a word from the Lord? No. Spam. Hallelujah. Let's just wait on the Lord a little bit, see if he's finished. Um. But one of the things Mark Taylor's been prophesying all along is he's going to have eight years, continuous eight years. Do you have anything you want to share? Too long, you're too old. Just kidding. Test. Well, praise the Lord. Um, I said, Lord, uh, I'll say it if he, wants, if he asks me something. So I have the continuation of what Brother Tom said. Um, back on November 23rd, I put in the war room 
Y'all, we're going to the neck on this one. Don't lose hope. The Lord already knows the outcome. This is an Isaiah chapter 8 situation. I'll pray the prayer here in a minute. In Isaiah 8, it was in the days of um, Uzziah's son Ahaz. He was the king of Jerusalem. And um, Samaria, or that was this was Isaiah 7, but uh, the Samarians, Ephraim, and Syria came together in a confederacy against Jerusalem to war against it. And the Lord ultimately gives to Isaiah a prophecy about Assyria that had conquered the northern kingdom, Ephraim, or would conquer the northern kingdom, Ephraim. And he told him that um, it's going to go to the, that they would essentially conquer the northern kingdom, Israel, and they would come against, they would march against Judah, and they would make it all the way up to the gates of Jerusalem, which is what you had spoken about up here today. That they would go even to the even to the very neck. And so, what the Lord gave to me, I wrote down here, um, Isaiah eight nine through twenty two. Do not join with mixture. Do not join with mixture. This is a what's coming next word for you. So what is the devil whispering to us? He's whispering, compromise, and you will be left alone. Compromise. And it's a compromise with worldly things, and it's a compromise with things that appear to be Christian but are not, which is what Tom was speaking of. And so I'll read you the verses here, and then, we'll, then, I'll, then I'll pray. It says that, Starting in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5. The Lord spake also unto me again, saying, For as much as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh that go softly, and rejoice in reason in Remaliah's son, now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory. And he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks, and he shall pass through Judah, and he shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. God with us. Doesn't it feel like we're there right now? Associate. Now, this is the word. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces and give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught or nothing. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Do not join with that which is not God. Amen. Do not join with that which is not of the Lord. Amen. This is the word for what's coming next. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples." And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord have given, hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. When they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? 
to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly bestead and hungry. And it shall come to pass when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. It's because they didn't listen to the Lord and they sought it from other places. So we, they will see the darkness and the destruction and the desolation and the separation that you've spoken of, which will drive them to darkness. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. And it goes on and gives, gives the prophecy of, of um, that the Lord would send uh, his son. And I say that to say this. There is a mixture that is occurring right now that's, that's very subtle when it's under the surface, and it's happening with the body of Christ, alongside of the body of Christ, for the purpose, and it's Jezebelic spirit, for the purpose of coming along and diverting us for, from what the Lord is trying to do and taking us down a road of essentially... Um, a nationalistic, not God foundational, right. fake foundation of the United States of America, which is built on uh, power and strength and overthrow and humanism. And so in a place where we are all feeling poured out, the subtlety of the devil is very very, very enticing. And we are looking for people who agree with us. And we are looking for people who, who we can lean on or perhaps they can lean on us. And the devil presents himself at that time to speak words similar to you and to say things that you feel like that sound good, but it's not founded upon what God is doing. And what Pastor David and... and uh, Brother Tom said today, which is what's happening right now, is the darkness and the mixture in us is being purged out first internally so that we don't fall for the mixture and the darkness externally that's being offered us in the very near future. And it's, been, it's, it's coming from Rome. It's coming from Rome. So I want to pray for you all and for myself. Father, I pray for all of these who are wavering in their faith, and I intercede for them, Lord. And I pray for an injection of faith to stand and to, to shield them from the arrows of propaganda. I lose strength for the battle unto them and joy in the Lord that they might be built back up in their most holy faith. Father, deliver us from the snares of hopelessness and wanting to give up and lay down the sword. We need strength for the warriors, Lord. We need strength to finish strong. Break the heaviness and despair off of anyone who may have it in Jesus' name. We rebuke that heaviness and despair off of you in Jesus' name. We shall renew our strength like the eagles. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The Lord is in the waiting. He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. And he's, he has not forgotten us. And I thank God for you men of God. And I thank God for this church. We're not stepping back, right? We're finishing strong. We're finishing strong, and you shall finish strong. You shall finish this race. You shall finish this race. Amen. Because this is promotion season. This is promotion season. And when you finish this relying and trusting in the Lord, in a place where everything says that what you see is not what God has said to you. The Lord is offering you a promotion for the next season and the next move of God. 
and many shall fall and be taken and shall be snared and they shall miss the promotion and they'll go back into the previous season where there's no grass for the sheep. But there's an open pasture ahead of us. And there's a test, always a test in the next season, a test to enter into the next pasture of faith. And that's all I have. Turn back over to you, brother. Keep talking. Come out from among them, saith the Lord. Be ye separate. Be ye separate. Yes, come out from among them, be ye separate. We are separate. And, it, and, and it's true. We're always, as he goes to remind them, he was severed by the blood of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Most of the work is done in the prayer closet, and then we go out and de defeat. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Are we ready for the message today? <clears throat> you want to stand up? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, you're so good. We bless you. We thank you, Father. We thank you from, we know from where our help comes, it comes from the Lord to strengthen us. Thank you, Father. Jehovah shall bless you and keep you. Jehovah shall make his face shine upon you, and he shall be gracious unto you. Jehovah shall lift up his countenance upon thee. He's watching, and he's putting his countenance upon you, and he shall give you shalom. In other words, you're walking basically under the feathers of his wings. Yes. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, total wholeness. Yes. We just speak that over the people today. No matter what happens in these next two weeks, we will be in your peace and on our face before you. Yes. Saying, God, help. Thank you, Father. Go get them. Sick him. Don't forget the cake if there's any left. There's none left, right? Yeah. Looks like there's two pieces left. So Cat Kerr says we're supposed to party, eat cake, because it's already done. Right? 